Bless y'all. Abba Yahweh, we thank you for another day, Father, another day to be before you, Father, come before you on scripture study. We ask, Father, that you bless the hearing of the saints, all the ones out there, Father, scattered abroad. We thank you, Father, for the patriarchs, for Abraham, for Isaac, for Jacob. We thank you, Father, for your servant Moshe, for David, all the prophets, the apostles. We thank you most of all for the blood of Jesus, Father, your sacrifice. We give you all glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you, Israel. You can be seated. Pastor, Brother Brett, and Elias are down in South Carolina right now, building what will be a new community with Elder Austin. Um, I was a young man, or well, I am, but <laughs> new in this and don't have much building experience. I would look for those opportunities to be around those situations. The pastor's talking about nation building. We got four men down there right now. So if you hear those things, especially you out there on the other side of the camera, you hear of these opportunities, I would, I would take advantage of it. It's a chance to see if your hands are blessed. It's a chance to see if your righteousness will speak for itself by your fruit. Uh, Brother Shane, I'm going to need you in there. <laughs> Well, I was in prayer this morning, um, seeking the mind of the Father. Uh, he put this on me, and, and I got to say, when you look at this through the lenses of the scriptures, it, it's grieving. It grieved me. Um, we're going to hit Ezekiel chapter 8. So, Brother Shane, if you could open that up. Um, it sure does put things in perspective of our condition. When you look at them through the lenses of the scriptures, so when you're ready, Brother Shane, go ahead with Ezekiel chapter 8, starting at the first verse. And it came to pass, in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I said in mine house, and the elders of Judah set before me, that the hand of Yahweh Elohim fell there upon me. Can you all hear him all right? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you all hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead, Brother Shane. Then I beheld in lo a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward fire, and from his loins even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. Mm. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the vision of Yahweh to Jew Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate. Where was that? Jerusalem. The door of Lord where? The inner gate. The inner gate. Right, go ahead, Brother Shane. That looketh toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy? Oh, image of jealousy. Y'all listen, pay attention. Faith comes by hearing. Go ahead, Brother Shane. Which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the Elohim of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eye now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. Mm, what is that image of jealousy? You all know? Well, we know what the commandments say. Thou shalt have no other Elohims before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything as in Shemaim above, earth beneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, the Elohim, am a jealous El. Go ahead, Brother Shane. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even 
the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, mm. that I should go far off from my sanctuary? Mm. But turn ye, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. A hole where? In the wall. All right, go ahead. Then he said, then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. A what? A door. A door? A door where? In the wall. In the wall. Well, this is the temple, right? Yes. Go ahead, read on, Brother Shane. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Behold the what? Wicked abominations. Mm. Go ahead, Brother Shane. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things. Creeping things are unclean, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. An abominable beast, and all the idols of the all house the of Israel. All the what? All the idols. Idols. All right, go ahead. Of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Portrayed where? Upon the wall. Uh -oh. That portrayed, that means carved in or entrenched. That's in there. And these are in the walls. Mm. And what is that temple now? Yeah, everybody touch your head. Uh-huh. What goes on in that mind? Hmm? What is it that distracts you? What is it in your life you put before the Father? That you put before prayer? Study? Going back and revisiting the Sabbath messages. And these things have been like an hour long. Why? Because they're loaded. I mean, these things are loaded. You got to revisit these. So I've been listening to last week's message. It's probably my third or fourth time. I'm still getting stuff. It's, it's like I listen to it new every time. And these, this Torah is deep. But these are the idols in your wall. What else can be idols? How about envy towards your brother or your sister? How about resentment? Malice, mm. bitterness, unforgiveness. How about yourself? How about your selfish self? Mm. Or your own will? How about submitting to the ones that rule over you? You know, it's amazing straightway. And the example we have by pastor and the elders, the men here that have been living it, why is it they can forsake all, but around the other assemblies, people are still living their own life. They're still holding on to their own will. Why is it you all can't submit to Pastor Corey up at Kansas City? Elder Austin, Elder Rufus in Georgia, Brother Al, Brother Mitchell down in Houston, or Brother Josh in Dallas, Brother Felix. Why is it they give you something to do, y'all can't obey it? Or you go and do your own thing. You can't forsake all. That's because you got these idols entrenched in you. You got this will, this selfishness still in you. Go ahead, read on, Brother Shane. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every where, man oh, where do they do it? Down well, the dark. you think nobody's looking. That's what shows your real character. Yes. Nobody has their eyes on you. That's what you, you see what you do when nobody's looking. But the eyes of Yah are what? 10,000 times greater than the sun? Yes, Ooh, you're not getting by. Go ahead, Brother Shane. 
every man in the chambers of his imagery. Of, of his? Of what? His? Mm, so this is his own, huh? This is himself. Read on. For they say, Yahweh seeth us not. Yahweh hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Goodness. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yah's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Do you weep for that old man? Or that old life? A lot more comfortable out in the world, wasn't it? Don't have all that persecution, the affliction, trials, tribulation. Now I better stop. Go ahead, Brother Shane. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations Dang, than these. I don't know if I want to hear any more. <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead, Brother Shane. And he brought me into the inner court of Yah's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of Yah, between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh and their face toward the east. And mm. they worshiped the sun toward the east. Mm. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing? A light house? thing? What's that? Is it, it a light thing? Go ahead, Brother Shane. To the house of Judah that they commit the abominations. Did which, Saul have that mindset? Took the commandments lightly. Go ahead, Brother Shane. That they commit the abomination which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence. Mm -mm -mm. And have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore... Mm. Will I also deal in fury? Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Then David write, if I regard iniquity in my heart, Yah will not hear me. Mm. Well, saints, these, I mean, these messages have been coming out. You can see it's all about marriage about getting a bride ready. We got tabernacles coming, and, and I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about you all, but I'm looking forward to it. All right. Oh, hallelujah. We got a debate coming up. Well, at least we hope. <laughs> it sounds like uh, old Pastor Roberts is doing everything he can to try to wiggle out of this one. And shoot, I don't blame him. I mean, if I... If I called myself Israel, if I called myself Jacob, claimed to be an Israelite, and you say polygyny isn't lawful, oh man, we'll get into this a little bit. Mm. All right, saints, we're going to learn more about our culture and what it means to be a young man of honor and the value of daughters and wives. Brother Shane, go ahead and get Barry Sheet 28, 1 through 5. We'll get a little context going here. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Bedamaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And Yahweh, hello, Yahweh Almighty, bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people mm -hmm. and give thee a blessing of Abraham. Ooh, blessing of Abraham. Go ahead. To thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger mm -hmm. which Yah gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob. And he went to Badamaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel of the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob and Esau's mother. 
Okay, so we see Isaac knows the blessing of Abraham will come to Jacob if he goes and serves Laban, right? And serves his kindred. Yeah. Isaac also knows that Jacob will return to the land of his inheritance after this. So how does he know that? You see, saints, even prior to the Torah being given, Moshe, or the law being given to Moshe, the patriarchs, they knew and lived this thing. Brother Shane, go ahead with, uh, let's get Leviticus 25, 39 through 41. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee... And if thee, thy what? If thy brother... Brother. Went on to his kinder, right? That's where Jacob's going? Go ahead, Brother Shane. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. But as a hired servant... And as but as a, a hired servant. Okay, so we got a difference here. We got bond servants and hired servants. All right, go ahead, Brother Shane. And as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his father's shall he return. So he's going to return to the possession of his own family, his fathers. Just as Isaac just talked about, right? To return to your land of your inheritance after you get a wife from your kindred. See, they knew this thing. They were living it. Alright, we're going to hit Deuteronomy 15, 12 through 14. I'm going to go ahead and read this. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him, how? Liberally. Liberally. All right, so he's not just going to go out poor. He's going to be provided for. He's going to have a living provided for him. He's going to be able to have a start with his, you know, after his servitude. Out of thy flocks, out of thy floor, and out of thy winepress, of that wherewith Yahweh the Elohim hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. All right, Brother Shane, we're going to continue with uh, Genesis 29. Continue on in the story, in the account. Hallelujah. Wherever you're ready, Brother Shane. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it, for out of that well they watered the flocks. With a great stone, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rode the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep. This and is so foreign from us, is it not? <laughs> I mean, you usually meet the other saints at a gathering or something, not at, not at the well or, you know, amongst some lives. My pastor says all the time, we're an agriculture people. Man, I saw a YouTube comment one time, and I was cracking up. This, this, this man said, if you don't know how to take care of cattle, you're probably not a Hebrew. <laughs> and I, just, I mean, I read this stuff, and you could see how far off we are from our culture. Go ahead, Brother Shane. And put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, which be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with it, the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. What ye the sheep, and go and feed them? And they said, We cannot, until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. 
And it came to pass, then Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rode the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Mm. And he mm -hmm. abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother. Because thou art my what? My brother. Brother. Yep. Read. Shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Mm. Again. Remember, this is before the Torah was given to Moshe. Leviticus 25, 39 through 41 again. And if thy brother that dwell by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant, but as a hired servant and as a sojourner. He shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the possessions of his fathers shall he return. We also know the Hebrew man, if he serves and he goes out seventh year, um, if he comes in with a wife, he goes out with a wife. Is that right? If he comes in and doesn't have a wife and his master gives him a wife, he leaves. He doesn't take the wife or any children that come with it. That's right. And that includes a Hebrew man. But remember, Laban and Jacob's case was different because of an agreement. The agreement was for a wife. Go ahead, Brother Shane, with uh, verse 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Now we have an agreement. All right? This is a contract. Yeah, you see how powerful a word is in Hebrew culture? You just sold yourself. You're his for seven years. You have an agreement. And him, too. If they're honorable men, they're going to hold to this to the end. Hmm. Go ahead, Brother Shane, verse 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Oh, hold on right there. Felicity, Felicity, you here? Come up here, please. I'll give you all an example. How old are you, Felicity? 12. Seven year agreement. She's 19. Getting there, huh? Even in our day. So if I was a young man unmarried and looking for a wife of my youth, Elder Spinney, <laughs> you just think what you can do, though, and how honorable this is. You spend seven years laboring for a man, a man of God, to an elder, right? Yes, sir. Elder Spinney isn't here. I don't see him sitting over here. He's at work right now. Yes, so where could that young man be right now and Elder Spinney be? Yes, sir. Elder Spinney could be up here teaching. <laughs> I could be sitting down <laughs> next to JC. What you think about that? It's more time for him to flee, feed the flock, be an elder, yes, guide and lead the saints that are off the land. That's true. That's true. So that's true you know, Elder Donnie knows. I mean, he's got, their time gets consumed with other things. Yes, you have a young man, an honorable young man, seeking your daughter. You make an agreement? Yes, 
there's substance there with labor. And we know it here. I mean, we work hard. And Elder Spinney, he'd also send them here, too, so it would work out for Brother James and I. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you look at, like, Brother Brett, you know, new addition. He's, it's almost like he's a clone off of us. He's a, he's a hard worker. He's there right now sweating. I'm, I'm sure it's hot. They said on the video it wasn't hot, Elder, but I don't believe it. I mean, it's 86 here, so it's probably 90 there and even more humid. But you see they're out there getting it done. The young men are getting it done. Thank you, Felicity. I won't torture you any longer. Also in that, you think about during the, that seven years, the elders, the father is going to be, be able to see the fruit of that man's hand. They're going to see if in time his righteousness speaks for himself. That he's worthy to obtain that bride. Because no, just no man is going to, or no young man, any man is going to come up and take that one. I guarantee you. She cooks, cleans, takes care of the children, takes care of some of our children. I mean, I see Felicity, she's out on the playground. She's got, she got their children and our children with her. And she, my wife told me the other day, and she gives them the rod, too. I was just like, dang. <laughs> Goodness. Man, but that, I mean, that's a young example of a great daughter of Zion right there. Mm. All right, glory to the king. All right, Brother Shane, continue on, verse 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife. My days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Pastor hit on this last week, right? Yes. Giving the firstborn first. And the example of being at the Yehudim, to the Yehudim first, then the Greek or the stranger. Yeah. That was good. Go ahead, Brother Shane. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. Well, read that again, Brother Shane, verse 28. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and he gave him, Rachel, his daughter. He gave wife, Jacob, yes. Israel, right? Another wife? Yes, Israel, right? I can see why he's trying to get out of this debate. <laughs> Goodness. I, I, don't, I mean, that's shameful. You go and call yourself Israel, and you got the example right here. All right, go to verse 29, Brother Shane. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid to be her maid. All right, go ahead and jump to um, chapter 30. We'll start, start the first verse. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister mm. and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Watch your words, sisters. It's powerful. Mm. Go ahead. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in your stead, who, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees 
that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. You see, um, Pastor was talking about this yesterday with amongst the brothers, Elder and I, um, and that every account, you see the envy, it doesn't go between the sisters or the sister wives. All, all accounts of the envy and all this spite and hatred, it, it happens with the seed and the inheritance. They're always seeking to build up their house, right? Yeah. Go ahead, bro, Shane. And Rachel said, Yah hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpha, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. So now we have Jacob with four wives, right? All right, go to jump to verse 25, Brother Shane. And it came to pass... When Rachel had borne Joseph, that Joseph, Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go unto my own place, to my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go. For thou knowest my service which I have done thee. That's Leviticus 25, 39 again, right? Along with the agreement that they had. So Jacob wasn't just talking outside of his neck off of feelings and emotions. He was taught. Taught by Isaac, who was taught by Abraham. Read on, Brother Shane. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee I have found favor in thine eyes. Tarry, for I have learned by experience that Yah hath blessed me for thy sake. Read that again. I have learned by what? I have learned by experience. Experience. That Yah hath blessed me for thy sake. By their fruit you shall know them. Mm. Verse 28. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And Yah hath blessed thee since my coming. And now, when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle. And all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me. Does your righteousness answer for you? Does your fruit answer for you? Go ahead, Brother Shane. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. So we have another agreement. The first one for the wives and now for substance, right? Remember the first 14 years of servitude was for Jacob's four wives, right? And then it shows seven years for each wife and her handmaid. And this shows the value of a daughter and the value of a bride. And the honor it takes for a young man to obtain one for sure, right? I mean, you're totally sacrificing all your will to serve a man, and you don't know what you're going to do. You belong to him. But, you know, if I was 
looking for a wife at this point in time, I'd follow this model right here. That's an honorable one right there, and one an elder would definitely look at, especially for one like that. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a small price to pay, considering God invested himself all glory, all esteem. Mm. He paid the price for us. I'll go ahead and read Hebrews 2.9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of Yah, should taste death for every man. All right, saints. Um, I want to finish with a few announcements. Mother Beasley, a uh, pastor just told, told us yesterday she's in the hospital again, I think. Um, so y'all keep her lifted up in prayer. You know, we love seeing her, and especially at the feast. I mean, she makes almost every feast. If y'all get a chance to ever talk to that mother, it's a blessing. She is sharp as all get out. <laughs> Man, I mean, she's given me wisdom, advice, parenting, being a father. The, the most recent was, you need to teach Judith to swim. I said, yes, ma'am. And so every time we got off early, I was out with the children. We're in the creek, and I'm in the deep end, and Judith is watching Daddy mostly swim. <laughs> so, you know, she'll get it, though. She'll, she'll come in with us. But, I mean, I think that's, that's wise, because you think about children, especially out here in the country, you have your eye off them for a second. They go near water, fall in. It's deep enough. But, I mean, she's... She's just a beautiful woman, Mother Beasley. Brother Jermaine, if she's not watching us, go ahead and, and send our blessings, our love to her. I uh, look forward to seeing her again. Other thing, tabernacles. What is it? And Sister Barb, we said the other day, it's 300 to 350 saints we got coming now. Anybody know what, the number, what our count is, Sister Vicki? 320? Well, that's, that's a lot of tents. Dude, I think we had 200 tents last year. <laughs> but we're looking forward to it. We'll keep Elias busy. So. <laughs> um, also, we have, uh, well, Sister Ashley's doing a play. She's been just about every Shabbat, that I, at least when I was out, I hear the children practicing. And if you all have seen any of the plays in the years past, I mean, she does an excellent job. They're very good. And it's, it's a blessing to see the children all together, one mind, one spirit. So, um, the other thing is a deliverance workshop, right? Yeah, so th this tabernacle is shaping up to be another big one. Um, I had to ask Elder Doug about the deliverance workshop. I hadn't experienced one yet here. It's, I guess it's been quite a few years since you all have done that, right? It's a long time now. Yeah. I mean, we do mass deliverance and our weekly de deliverance here at Straightway, but deliverance workshop's different. We're going to have an elder every night teaching on a spirit, one spirit. I think about that, a full teaching on one spirit. Talk about uncovering the works of the devil, huh? Yeah. And the power of Yah, is, it, it'll be there. He always shows up on his feast. He'll have his way with his people. You just see this year all the messages have gone forth, preparing the bride, right? Yeah. Wants us with our garments unspotted, washed. And that's what this is about, you can see. So that's what deliverance is about. Getting out all those idols that are entrenched in the walls of your temple. So spend time. I encourage you, you all to uh, spend time in these, these recent messages because there's a lot in them. Um, and that's all I have. You all can stand up. Bless you all out there on the other side of the camera. Abba, y'all, we thank you for these words, Father. We ask that your, your words sink deep down in our hearts, Father, bring about a better performance. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I give you all honor, glory, and praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh-oh.
Look at him looking. 